The year is 1789, the Great French Revolution. Disasters push people to revolution, and revolution brings new disasters. The French were tired of food shortages and widespread economic depression. As a result, the anti-royalists sent Louis XVI and 11,000 of his supporters to execution before targeting the last queen of France, Marie Antoinette. At the same time, ambitious Corsican artillery officer Napoleon Bonaparte seeks promotion. 1793. The queen is executed in the central square, causing the crowd to cheer and rejoice. Only Napoleon looks on apprehensively, unwilling to repeat such a fate. A little later, Commissioner Paul Barris informs the artillery officer that the British fleet has captured the port city of Toulon. If they are not stopped, France may fall, losing the battle to England. He begs Napoleon to come up with a plan that will solve the problem as soon as possible. Realizing that only a fortress equipped with cannons is of value, Napoleon proposes to capture it. For several days, a detachment of the French army prepares for a bloody battle. While Napoleon arrives at Toulon and looks around, watching the actions of the British, his subordinates melt down old weapons, making explosives and shells for the cannons. At night, when the British soldiers are drinking and partying, Napoleon begins the assault on the fortress. He starts by setting off a few explosions to create a distraction, after which soldiers with ladders climb to the top of Toulon's tower. Napoleon, not afraid to fall on the battlefield, goes on the attack, but one of the shells hits his horse. This does not stop the officer, and he climbs to the top of the fortress, helping the soldiers to overpower the enemy. After capturing the high ground, the French use British cannons to attack their fleet and burn the ships nearby. In the morning, Napoleon is promoted to brigadier general for successfully completing the task. On July 27, 1794, the era of terror ended, as one cannot execute everyone who is displeasing to the government. Robespierre was overthrown and tried to escape, after which he shot, hoping to settle scores with his life. The attempt failed, so he was sentenced to the guillotine and 41.5 thousand prisoners found their long-awaited freedom. A little later, at the victim's ball, Napoleon identified a charming woman and immediately fell in love with her, trying to get to know her better. The next morning he was visited by the son of Officer de Beauharnais, who asked him to return his late father's weapons. Having fulfilled the boy's request, Napoleon met his mother Josephine, the very woman he had seen at the ball. The pair began dating, and soon they realized that they loved each other. October 5, 1975, Royalist Uprising The rebels decided to stage a coup d'etat, to be ruled by a new king. Four times outnumbering the government troops, they hoped to capture Paris and realize their plan, but on the way became a detachment of Napoleon. Knowing no mercy for the people, considering them enemies, the general rolled out artillery with shrapnel-type bursting shells. Just one volley mowed down several ranks of the advancing rebels, terrifying the rest and forcing them to flee the scene. Immediately afterward, Napoleon and Josephine marry hoping that they will soon have an heir. Despite the couple's tumultuous connection, this does not happen. July 1798. Having conquered Italy, which surrendered without a fight, Napoleon went to Egypt to liberate territories and turn the country into another French colony. Despite the numerical advantage of the enemy, the Battle of the Pyramids ended in a 100% victory for Napoleon. He views with interest the cultural treasures of a foreign country, particularly the tombs and coffins of the Egyptian pharaohs. Napoleon has no immediate plans to return home, but learns that his wife has a sweetheart named Hippolyte Charles, who is ten years younger than her. At first, the general is skeptical, but afterwards he decides to return to France. Not catching his wife at home, he realizes that the rumors turned out to be true. When Josephine arrives at the castle, she sees her belongings stacked in suitcases in the middle of the courtyard, as her husband has thrown her out and does not want to see her again. Despite his anger, Napoleon forgives the traitor, for his love for Josephine is stronger than any other feeling. The leaders of the directory summon the general who left Egypt, accusing him of desertion. Napoleon does not consider himself guilty or a fugitive, accusing the political leadership of driving the country into bankruptcy during his absence. A little later, the general's house is visited by Mr. C.A.S. and offers to overthrow the government by leading the state with a provisional college of three consuls. Napoleon agrees and orders the troops to act. 
arresting officials who have plundered the country's treasury. Some surrender voluntarily, others try to resist, but the result is the same. They all end up in a hall where they must pass amendments to the Constitution, allowing Napoleon and two other distinguished gentlemen to take the consul's seats. When the chiefs refuse, Napoleon's brother Lucien raises the guard against them, forcing the deputies to vote to amend the Constitution at rifle point. Napoleon and Josephine are respected and popular among the local population. Enjoying the rich life, they join social parties and move to a new and more luxurious castle. Everything seems fine, but France's foreign policy has failed. The almost penniless country is not respected in Europe, and Austria and England have joined together in an alliance that could destroy France in a matter of hours. The foreign minister offers Austria an alliance, but is flatly refused. A little later, realizing that clashes are inevitable, he asks Napoleon to become king and lead his country to victory. On December 2, 1804, the Pope crowns Napoleon, proclaiming him Emperor of the French. Despite his high status, Napoleon is still concerned that Josephine cannot bear him an heir. Having become emperor, he wants even to have a son, but things do not work out for the couple. Soon Napoleon is going to war and threatens Josephine with divorce if she does not get pregnant soon. 1805. The Russian and Austrian emperors meet in camp to discuss launching an attack on the French, having taken up a position at Austerlitz. They have no doubts about a joint victory, which will allow them to seize new territories and subjugate France. Alexander I and Franz II learn that the location of the enemy's troops has been discovered and prepare a large-scale attack using almost their entire army. It would seem that France is doomed, but Napoleon knows of the enemy's approach and prepares for it by creating a cunning trap. At dawn, the infantry advances on the French camp positions, but they allow them to get as close as possible. After a head-on collision with a small unit, the Austrian-Russian troops are trapped. Napoleon, hidden in the woods with most of the army, waited for the enemy to strike from the flag. Thousands of soldiers forced the Allied army to flee, retreating onto the ice of a frozen lake. Immediately afterward, Napoleon gave the order to strike with cannonballs from a camouflaged French battery, causing most of the enemy to go down. A little later, Napoleon meets with the Austrian emperor for negotiations and asks for thanks for not completely destroying the armies of the Austrian and Russian empires, although he could have done it without much difficulty. 1807, Napoleon's mother forces him to spend the night with a young girl to see if Josephine is infertile. The emperor agrees and fulfills his mother's errand, after which he learns that the girl has become pregnant, confirming their fears. Sincerely loving Josephine, Napoleon asks the minister to stage the birth of his wife, giving the child of a lover for the child of a married couple, but the aide refuses to participate in such adventures. Three years later, Napoleon and Josephine divorce. At one point, she refuses to read her words, for which she receives a slap in the face. Despite this, the emperor promises to remain best friends and write letters, sending Josephine to a country castle. A little later, Napoleon makes an alliance with Alexander, first to get the Russian Empire to refuse to cooperate with England by laying a mainland blockade. To seal the pact, Napoleon asks one of his sisters to marry him, but Alexander refuses because she is too young to marry. Trying to find a more reliable ally, Napoleon marries Marie-Louise, daughter of Franz II. A year later, the couple has a son, whom the emperor immediately takes to Josephine, because he still loves her and wants to share this joy with her alone. June 1812, Alexander first breaks the terms of the alliance and opens the ports to England, leading to conflict. Napoleon decides to invade the Russian Empire to punish the traitor for not honoring the treaty. The columns embark on a long and dangerous journey, but they are met by Cossacks who strike chaotically. The French try to pursue them, but fall into a trap each time, losing more and more of their soldiers. On September 7th, the bloody Borodino massacre takes place, during which 28,000 French soldiers say goodbye to their lives. Not counting the casualties, the emperor rejoices in his successes and writes letters to his ex-wife, reporting another battle won. Soon, French troops enter the devastated Moscow, which was home to 300,000 people. Napoleon is shocked by Alexander's flight and cowardice, so he stays the night to decide how to proceed. 
During the night, the French emperor is awakened by a fire and learns that the Russians have set fire to Moscow. Assuming they will do the same to St. Petersburg, Napoleon proposes to take another city, but the harsh winter interferes with his plans. The French army, as well as their horses, are unprepared to survive the harsh weather conditions. Cold, hunger, and disruption of the food supply chain cause the army to retreat, with no more than 40,000 soldiers surviving out of 600,000 men, May 1814. Napoleon is forced to abdicate because of a major military failure. The Allies grant him power over the island of Elba, promising the former emperor good financial security for the rest of his life. After spending almost a year on the island, Napoleon learns that Josephine has returned to social life and even met with the Russian emperor. Enraged, Napoleon flees the island and, seizing a ship, returns to the shores of France. The king sends troops to stop the usurper for fear of losing power. Napoleon addresses the soldiers who have pointed their weapons at him and asks them to join him. After a solemn speech, the army salutes the emperor. Meanwhile, Josephine passes away due to a serious illness shortly before the arrival of her former husband. The Allies are not going to give up power over France to a distraught Napoleon and gather a huge force. The army includes 125,000 soldiers from England, 120 from Prussia, and 250,000 French traitors to the emperor, protecting the king. Despite the numerical advantage of the enemy, Napoleon decides to act brazenly first defeating the British forces under the Duke of Wellington. An army under the command of the usurper is sent to Waterloo, but decides to postpone the attack because of heavy rain. The emperor wants the ground to dry up, but soon it is revealed that Field Marshal Blecher's Prussian army is too close and action must be taken. Napoleon sends troops into battle, but the British army holds the defense successfully repelling the attacks. Napoleon personally goes into battle, but the Prussians appear on the battlefield, defeating the French. A sniper holds Napoleon's headdress but leaves him alive. As he retreats, he greets Wellington, congratulating him on his victory. A little later, they meet aboard an English ship. Napoleon should have been executed, but instead is sent to an island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. After spending six years in exile with his children, Napoleon makes up his own version of history. On May 5, 1821, Napoleon left his life, hearing the voice of his beloved Josephine. Thank you for watching. Please support us, like, and subscribe.